everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about wheel spacers and what effects they may have on your car. Now the idea is very simple. You take a spacer, you add it to your hub, and that pushes your wheels out further. So why might you do this? Uh, what are some reasons for it? And what are some of the uh, drawbacks of doing something like this? So I'm going to kind of work through four different sections here. Uh, first of all, just explaining what it is. So you add in a spacer to your hub and that pushes your wheel out so you have a larger track. So one of the reasons you might do this, um, let's say you're trying to fit a big brake kit and it doesn't quite fit with your current wheels, well you may be able to push them out uh, and then not have any interference with the caliper and the wheel itself. So that may be one reason. Um, you might want to opt for larger wheels in that instance uh, with the same offset to do it, but that's one way you could handle that problem. Uh, another benefit of doing this is that it gives you a wider track. So what is the benefit of a wider track? Well, if you extend your track out, you have less lateral load transfer under cornering. And with less lateral load transfer, you have more even distribution of your load on your tires. And with more even distribution of load on your tires, you're going to have more grip. Now, I say this as a benefit, but the effects are gonna be extremely small. Uh, I was doing some math, and I will have an example in the future where I'll actually do the math on an actual car and show the difference it can make, uh, but it looks like it's about one to 2% uh, less load transfer um, in kind of an extreme scenario. So it's not gonna be a huge benefit, uh, but a benefit nonetheless of having a wider track. So moving on to larger wheel fitment. So if you are trying to set fit a larger set of wheels uh, and they have a different offset than your stock wheels, which first of all, you should be looking into the offset if you do plan on getting larger wheels and larger tires, you wanna maintain a same offset. Uh, but that said, if you can't, let's say you get some that are larger and so here's your stock uh, and your stock track there in blue and your stock offset there in red, um, so as you get the aftermarket and you put that onto the hub, let's say these kind of go in further. So they're going to be interfering with your suspension, things like that. And you've also reduced your track here with this aftermarket set of wider wheels. So instead you throw in a spacer, you push that wheel back out. You can maintain your same track and offset and have the benefit of wider tires. So that's another way you could use wheel spacers. Now one of the things you really need to keep into consideration when you're using wheel spacers is how it changes your suspension geometry. And this is probably something that's gonna be overlooked often, uh, not thought about quite as much, but the effects can be uh, kind of drastic here. So what we're looking at here is a, we've got a double wishbone suspension, here's our tire, and here's the center point of that tire, here's a center line of the tire, and then this purple line is if we were to add a spacer, that's where the center line of the tire would be pushed out to. And so here's our suspension. We've got our kingpin axis. And of course, where those, uh, the distance between those is the scrub radius. Now I have a separate video explaining scrub radius in more detail. Uh, so you may want to check that out. I'll include a link in the video description. But so as you can see, if you add a spacer, you're going to be increasing the positive scrub radius, uh, which isn't necessarily a desirable thing to do. You're also going to be increasing the kingpin offset. So that's the distance between the center of the tire and going all the way over to the kingpin axis horizontally. And then perpendicularly to this kingpin axis, meeting up with that center point is known as the deflection force lever arm. And so this is another thing that you're going to be increasing by increasing a spacer. And I'm not going to say that I understand all of the effects of doing this, uh, but just keep in mind that when the engineers designed your vehicle, they did uh, because that's their job. And so they're putting together what they determined to be uh, cost effective, safe, but also the best performance uh, when it comes to the suspension geometry and the offset of the wheel. And so they're looking into all of these different characterizations and parameters that are changing, uh, which we're not necessarily thinking about by offsetting it. Some of the negative effects you can have by doing this, uh, you're gonna have reduced fender clearance, you're going to have, it could change your tire wear or your toe characteristics, especially under braking. It can increase your steering effort and it can also increase uh, or decrease rather your steering stability under braking. And this comes down to the scrub radius. Uh, I have a video explaining why that is, why you would have less steering stability. Um, and then also you can change the actual uh, effective spring rate at the wheels. So not the spring rate itself, that won't change, but the effective spring rate at the wheels changes based on suspension geometry. And by offsetting it, you're adding leverage to that wheel. And so you're gonna be reducing the overall effective spring rate of your suspension. Um, and so that's another uh, drawback of doing that. So there's a lot of reasons why you may not want to consider using wheel spacers and instead stay with the stock 
uh, suspension geometry. Now moving on, another uh, drawback could be the wheel bearing. So here we have our hub, inside is a wheel bearing of course, and then here in purple is where our wheel is. So that wheel is holding up the weight of the car, that passes over uh, through these studs of course to the hub. So you've got a force here and a distance and that's going to be creating a moment and that bearing has to basically absorb that moment, that force, and allow the wheel to rotate. Now if you use a wheel spacer, you're going to be pushing that wheel out and although the force on that wheel will be the same, you have the same weight of a car, uh, the distance it is away from the bearing is going to change. So the loading characteristics are going to be different, whereas it was designed for these loading characteristics, now you've increased that load and it's going to be at a different angle and at a larger distance, so you've increased the moment and you're going to have different loading on that bearing and that can reduce the life of that wheel bearing. So thank you guys for watching and if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below.